allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just a reminder to have your um, speakers out enough and not under covers uh, or wherever and just uh, come to uh, speak out and not to go all like I usually do. Uh, roll call. Chisel? Here. Bell Richard? Here. Carlson? Here. Luce? Yes. Johnson? Here. Hadley? Here. Bergen? Here. Is there any public comment that needs to be made at this time? I'm going to approve the agenda first. Oh, I'd love to do that. Uh, approval of the agenda. I have a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Bell Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luz? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Okay, now let's try for public comment. I'm being seen. Consent agenda. Consent agenda consists of minutes of the December 17, 2018 meeting, the claims list, renewal, special class C, beer, wine license for maids, including Sunday sales, partial pay estimate number six, dry run trail, box cover project, in the amount of $5,348.30. Move for approval of the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Chisel? Aye. Bell Richard? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Uh, public hearing, conduct public hearing on proposals to enter into general obligation agreement. Might you do some explaining on that, Chad? It's a little bit complex. So you have two public hearings uh, here that you can run concurrently, Mayor. One is for general purpose loan agreement and the other is for a central purpose loan agreement. Uh, staff recommendation on these, um, as discussed in a previous budget and finance committee meeting, um, general purpose loan agreement is for necessary repairs uh, and significant maintenance items uh, here at City Hall in the municipal building, the library, um, and potentially the fire department floor uh, if that uh, discussion continues. Uh, and then under the essential purpose loan agreement uh, would be the water and sewer uh, maintenance and repair items to the Ronan storage tanks, Locust Road storage tank, the business park, and Luther College uh, elevated storage tanks. Cleaning, maintenance, um, painting on the Locust Road business park and Luther College ones. The Ronan tanks are, of course, concrete. They're over 100 years old, so there's significant concrete uh, repair work on those tanks. Is there anybody that wishes to speak to the um, obligation agreements that we're going to be discussing, these two. Resolution 2937, Resolution 2939. Uh, maybe just one other point of clarification. Sure. Uh, staff recommendation is that we ask for the maximum amount uh, allowable under this form of uh, loan agreement. Um, we do have a list of, of projects that are around $500,000. Some of the projects uh, costs are unknown. Uh, either because we haven't been able to get a contractor in there to tear them apart and look at them, or the cost won't be known until we get somebody in there to dig a little deeper at it. So uh, while we're asking for the full amount, it's not anticipated that we would need it. Or our and hopes when, you, would be. when you talk about the full amount, that's 750 Right. Again, broken into broken the general into or the essential purpose. purpose. Okay. The one for the water is not really a um, revenue bond that we're doing. No, these are general obligation loans, but we would abate that with water revenues, water and sewer revenues. Well, in this case, they're elevated tanks, so it'd be water. Well, we, we can. Yeah. If we, if we can, we for it. Because it's going to be a deal bond. Okay. So we'll have the ability to do it. And that's standard 
budgeting practice for us. We, you get better rates if you borrow or levy as GO, and then it also gives you the freedom or the options on how you want to abate that debt. Do we need to say that then, rather than a general purpose note? Should we say general obligation bond? No, uh, the general purpose and the essential purpose <coughs> refers to the purposes that you're spending the money. Not, not the, the financing mechanism. Not right. Gotcha. Yeah. Three year payback. Any other comments? Yeah, and three year, three year. We've set it up for a three year um, amortization of that loan to be as aggressive as possible, um, in the hopes that we get this kind of settled before we take on the Locust Road debt. I'll close the public hearing and move to discussion by the city council. I'd move for approval, resolution 2937. Second. Any further discussion? It is just one resolution, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that resolution is 2937, correct? Correct. Yep. Roll call. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Bell Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Uh, resolution 2939. 38. Mm -hmm. 38. Can you clarify that for me, please? 2938. Right. Consider resolution 2938 a resolution amending fees for services and permits. Okay. I take that back. Do you have something different? No. Because it says 39 on the one we yeah, printed out. The, the 2937 and 2939. I don't know. All mine say 2938, so <laughs> as does the resolution. So Okay, but all right. I think that was my confusion. You only did one resolution for the last one. Oh, right. Okay. Then I'm Both the loans were under one. Okay. Hence, no, I got it. Originally, it was unclear whether we needed two public hearings and two gotcha. resolutions. Oh, right. By Friday, we had determined two public hearings, one resolution. There you so, go. But I thought we'd change that. Okay, so consider resolution 2938, resolution amending fees for services and permits. That's right. Uh, and this resolution establishes various permit and application fees authorized under the Municipal Code of the City of Decorah. Um, a lot of our different code sections, for example, planning and zoning, when it refers to application fees or permit fees, it refers to an exhibit approved by resolution of the city council rather than codifying various fees, permits, and charges for service. And so we put these into a resolution exhibit, uh, which is in your packet. Um, further updating this time around, um, we are consolidating an older version of fee schedule from 2007 uh, and then a version that uh, was updated in 2014. We're putting those all into one resolution and one exhibit. Uh, we're making adjustments uh, to permit fees like compliance certificate fees for decks or sheds or uh, building um, by usually five or ten dollar increases this time around. Um, just to keep up with inflation, there are publication costs. Sometimes there's mailing or postage costs, especially for the Board of Adjustment, uh, as we send notification to adjourning property owners and those types of things. Uh, so, you know, over the last five years or 12 years, we're just trying to update and be more consistent. Does this even cover? <laughs> I mean, the fees are quite reasonable. Um, so for a... Uh, you know, residential miscellaneous, for example, if it was an accessory building permit, that would require... Uh, you know, know, generally a lot of these, up, especially there with the, um, the residential permits, like the attached garages or decks or sheds or things like that, there's not a lot of staff time that goes behind them. Okay. Um, it's when we get into some of the larger ones, like the Board of Adjustment, and so that one's $110. Uh, that one has the mailing, there's staff time behind preparing the application for the board as part of the board packet, et cetera. But some of these others, there's just less time. But there's still some, so it acknowledges that there's still you know, some printing costs, 
uh, document storage retrieval type costs and those kinds of things. What this doesn't get into and what, what the person uh, Luce and I talked about earlier is if the city were to adopt a building code, uh, that would be an entirely different fee structure behind something like this. And, and usually those are based on evaluation of the building because then again you've got a department of staff inspection services behind each of those. I would motion to approve resolution 2938. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Bill Richard? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Motion to pass. Uh, discussion of possible action on a process plan for reviewing and updating the city's sustainability plan and formation of a task force or committee for review and update thereof. I appreciated being able to get together with uh, uh, Steve Luce uh, because at the last city council we had uh, a request for an amendment that I was totally confused as far as what had transpired throughout the beginning and it was extremely helpful to go back and look at uh, minutes and, and having um, the discussion. Uh, I noted that uh, in April it came before the City Council that uh, to adopt the city's 2020 sustainability plan, 10, 20, 2010. 2010. Um, but at that time, the council decided that with everything that was going on, that wasn't an option. But during that meeting also, a motion was made and seconded to review and update the feasibility plan, which I'm assuming is the 2010 sustainability plan. Uh, but there was really no vehicle set up or other than to say that a committee could be formed to work on it, which a committee was formed to work on it. Um, although when I went to look, it, it was a bit confusing because I didn't know who was on the committee or what they had done or what they had worked on. And so I feel somewhat more up to date, but I'll probably need more information going forward. Also, it also came that um, uh, that committee has been giving updates, but it really related to the STAR, which in relation does work with sustainability as well. And uh, in December, it was voted to uh, apply to be one of the STAR members. So it was helpful to be able to get some of that information straightened out in my head. Now, I did, Steve did provide me with a list of members that I'm assuming are these a list of members that have been working on the project? Correct. Okay. Uh, the other piece that I noted was, I mean, I haven't seen any minutes or so. I just was having a hard time grabbing that. No, I think I feel a little more comfortable than I did. But um, my one question was, is, is the, up, the committee to update, review and update that 2010 sustainable decor piece? Um, is the decor sustainability, that's a website, who works with that? Has anybody been updating or working with that? There is a website. Mm -hmm. It was part of the it was, 2010 plan adoption, okay. I think. It was started by an intern that worked for Chad. Um, oh, okay. And then okay. since has been updated, I think, by someone at the Michigan Energy District from time to time. And then there was also, well, and also there was an intern with someone that worked as well, correct? Correct. Not on that website. No, that was on the star yes. piece, correct? 
Correct. Okay. So what I'm attempting to do is get to a point where we would have designate a task force to work with this update. And my question is, is that correct? Have I got it? Well, would it, before we get to that point, would it be possible to see the work done up till now so we kind of... It's been presented in November and December's meeting but not dealt with. What the work so far has been is to develop the plan that was in your Dropbox of how we would engage the community in finding out what the community wants to do as far as the sustainability plan. And is that the plan that you brought forth last? Last that's two the, months, yes. Yep, that's the framework and, for moving forward. And that is the work that they have done throughout the summer uh, in addition to working with the park. It's not all the detailed data that's been gathered. It's simply what those persons on the list in front of you have worked to develop as a reasonable way to get community input into the sustainability plan. But having the task force developed, having the framework for open meeting and mm -hmm. for reporting and whatnot will be very helpful to provide clarity and transparency and a potential mechanism for bringing things to the council in a more clear fashion rather than having it be a hodgepodge shotgunny type approach. Okay. Just like any other uh, mayoral appointed uh, group. I had spoken earlier to the city manager regarding back when we did the thing about reviewing and renewing the feasibility plan yeah. in April um, to not have had another motion that said who and to help us get to this point that we're at right now would right. have been realistically beneficial. It would. And I I agreed with at the time <clears throat> with the amount that was it was pretty crazy. So at least now we're attempting to get to a point. It was very helpful to work with Chad, though, okay. to find out what the process is for something that's not a commission. Yes. There's not a real solid vehicle for a council task force. Task force. Right. But now, now the framework is in place, and we know through Jim's work the, the legal requirements and the, uh, the framework mm -hmm. of what a task force is. Yeah. Um, so I think everything moving forward will be much more clear. But I know when I thought of it, I think I originally had mentioned a commission, but I don't feel that at now, but that doesn't mean that as that task force moves ahead or works with things that that couldn't come up. Um, so could I ask for some clarification, Ross, to that point that you feel like you have clarification about the sort of legal setup of a committee versus the task force, could we all have that understanding? Sure. Jim, you want to take that one John. out? Or John, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, could you repeat the question? Please? Yeah, so, I mean, Ross was saying that he's received clarity from you about what a task force is or isn't as compared to our a committee and a commission, mm -hmm. and I, I am not clear, so. I'm trying to, I'm sorry, I'm trying to recall our conversation from, was this last April we talked about? It? Uh, I got it from yeah. Chad. So. Well, yeah. But there's a, so right, the, there's the a difference. Conversation centers around whether there's a formal and standing commission, like a human rights or a park rec or a library or historic preservation, right? That's by ordinance and that's very prescripted and formalized. Um, chapter 21 talks about appointed uh, task force with a specific purpose and end goal in mind, which this is what this feels like, right? Yep. You want to put together a group of people to work on a particular project, your sustainability plan update, for a particular period of time. Once that task and that time frame is ended, they're released from their duties. Um, it seems clear, I think, as we've gone through chapter 21 that of the Iowa Code that the mayor can appoint that with council approval. It is subject to open records, open meetings, but it's for that defined period of time and task. Not that you would set up a formal standing 
commission or committee, right? And we had done that in the past when I was on planning and zoning, when the comp plan update task force met. It was a larger group of community that was the a mayoral appointed task force was used to update that document as well. So there's precedence for it. Okay. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a new approach that the city hasn't used before. No, I think I think my confusion came similar to trying to find what the you know what the group had been working on. Other than I know there was a report. I didn't know, you know, if there were minutes I couldn't find someplace when I was just looking about who was on it, although I knew there was people that were working on it. Just, just in support of Steve and Ross, your work, I, I, I had clarity throughout this process and yeah. felt like we were updated here in committee meetings and just in general council discussion. Um, so I feel like we're sort of repeating a process that, to Steve's point, I wish would have been cleared up in April. Because I, I, in here, I had clarity. I understand yeah. that you feel like there wasn't clarity. I work. certainly can't appreciate that. I can also appreciate and the, my confusion, so. Cause, because in my mind, it was a mayoral appointed task force. We had submitted the names, and but without knowing what the, what the steps well, were for creation I think the of task part, force. I couldn't figure out who the names were. I couldn't find it. Sure. You know. But that's why I appreciated the discussion we're having now. And I think there's going to be times when it does take extra clarification in order to mean something. And, and it wasn't clear to me as staff to provide that direction back then either that you wanted a committee to work on that. Uh -huh. So that's why you were not advised. What I've got on the agenda for you today is the ability to approve the plan or the process, if that's what the council would desire to do, and then for the mayor to submit the list of names for the task force and the council to approve that moving forward. I don't think it has to hinder any work or okay. negate any work that's been done. You just simply make those motions and move forward. Okay. So we'd be looking for a motion to formalize a task force. I'd ask if the, uh, with the stipulations of open meetings and various things, then is it simply that that committee would submit to the city and they would cover the newspaper post of a meeting being called, various things? How do, what are the processes? Are the, yeah, so the standard protocol is for the chairs of any of the boards or commissions to email in or, or bring in the agenda in sufficient time that we can get it posted and get it faxed to the media that have requested that. And we have that posted in our on our website of how to function we do. as a... Yeah, that doesn't satisfy any legal requirements, but we do post them on our website. The legal requirement is that it's posted on the bulletin board at the place of the meeting and that it's submitted to any of the media outlets that have requested notice. But we do also put them on our website. So yes. turning it into the office administration would take care of the, we'll, we'll take care all of those things? As long as it's submitted in a timely fashion, yes. So that's what I'm wondering if it's very clear for people who are on such a thing to figure it out, how to do it. Staff will provide you guidance. Plus, you two have been working on it. You're going to know. I know nothing. <laughs> you will know. <laughs> How about if I put it that way? Okay. I'd make a motion to uh, approve the appointment of the task force of the committee that's in front of you in your handouts. And does everybody have the listing of the committee? For the sake of the public, I'll read that list as submitted yep. by Councilperson Luce today at 1.30. Uh, that so that motion would be to establish a task force committee for the purpose of uh, amending or renewing the... Uh, and this is the people that have been working since Ross and I put together the task to try and do this. And that list consists of Emily Neal, Barbara Mossman, Joel Zook, Scott Tim, Sandra Clausen, Tim Wagner, Amy Chicos, Ross Hadley, and Steve Luce. Was there a second to that motion? Second. Further discussion? Roll 
call? Hadley? Aye. Luce? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Bill Richard? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Very good. Did you want to take any action on the plan? No. Somebody should make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I would move that we adopt the plan for the task group to utilize the process draft proposal for a sustainability committee. Correct. Second. Discussion? Roll call. No, wait a minute. Luce? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Chisel? No. Bill Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Hadley. Aye. Very good. I look forward to hearing the progress to make with that. It thank might be good. And thank you. Yeah, and we'd uh, be good to have a point of contact for information uh, when we put your first meeting or whatever. So thank you very much for that. Okay. Number 11, consider approval of an update of council rules and procedures. This item uh, is coming forward uh, as the mayor and I work on uh, updating these. Uh, as you can see on the front cover of the uh, rules and procedures sheet, they, they get amended or reviewed every couple of years. There are two items. Uh, in this particular amendment or review. Uh, the first is a desire to make it more clear that these rules of procedure would um, spread to the boards and commissions um, that are formally appointed. And task force. And, and task force. Um, by uh, making the statement, these rules shall apply to all committees and boards of the city unless otherwise provided by state law, city ordinance, or other applicable rules or regulations. Uh, the second uh, item being amended is uh, in item five, procedural matters, and has to do with motions to reconsider. Uh, this was an item that came up in the last year to 18 months uh, at the council table in terms of how uh, motions are reconsidered or brought back for discussion by this body. And so uh, working with uh, the city attorney's office, John Anderson, he makes a recommendation uh, that's highlighted in the draft document uh, by yellow. So those would be the two items submitted for amendment into the council's rules and staff would recommend that council consider those and approve. And, and just as a note, as I put in the memo, the timelines are a mere suggestion. This is just so we're all operating on the same page. Because uh, when I get asked to provide uh, uh, an opinion on the rules, I have to go to Robert's rules, which uh, sometimes co seems to contradict itself. So <laughs> you're free to come up with your own rules, and th these are just a mere suggestion, but I think we all uh, would be served by having some clear, clear guidelines mm -hmm. ahead of time about um, what the limitations are and rules for motions to reconsider. Can you think of an instance, John, when one year of duration from the last would, I mean, uh, the, the, the one that came up actually was the one on the, um, uh, the idling ordinance. You know, that came up twice, I think within a 12 month period, uh, or maybe it was over a 12 month period, but you know, uh, it, it, when you look at the rules, it says that we can only uh, bring a motion to reconsider once. Well, in my mind, okay, once forever? No, that doesn't seem fair. We don't want to bind future city councils, uh, whether it's the same people or people change, but what is the right amount of time for something to come up, yet at the same time, we, won't, we don't want to be beating a dead horse. You know, if it's been voted on and people have said no, we don't want it to have it keep coming up. So I'm thinking idling in terms of it was once referred to Public Safety Committee. That's not really considering it. No, it, it was, wasn't that the one that was vetoed by the mayor? Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was defeated. So then the question comes, well, 
when can that come up again? And I would always say, you know, if it's substantially different, if it's some, maybe sounds similar, but there's some substantially different provisions, I'd say it's a new game, you know, and that's not going to be necessarily um, held back by emotion, timelines and a motion to reconsider. But what if, what if it's the exact same issue? Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't you guys want the ability or the right for another council member to bring that back up? You know, what's, what's fair? I, that's somewhat, to, that's to your discretion, but uh, again, just for clarity and so everybody has the same expectations, we might as well spell it out. So, John, I think the other part that came up with the idling as an example is the difference between the old council and the new council. Mm -hmm. And and so what we determined in that, that a, that a previous council member should be the one that brings that, and like I, as a new council member, could not have brought that. Is there a, a is it, would it be appropriate or would we be interested in considering something like, you know, within the year or at the point of a new council, like some. Uh, yeah, absolutely, that it, absolutely. That's that's a, an appropriate suggestion, and I kind of struggled with that too. Do you wait until you know another election has been held, right. and, uh, or or uh, I think every two years we have somebody new, or mm -hmm. well, somebody's vote. There's voted an on. election anyway. There's yeah. an election anyway. Do you, do you use that, uh, um, or do you use a calendar calendar year? Uh, or how do you do it, a fiscal year, whatever, 12 month period, rolling 12 month period, I don't know. Uh, again, that's for, for you guys, and I'm just kind of throwing an idea out there that's arbitrary, but I think a starting point for discussion, and mm -hmm. you go either way up. And maybe you want more time to think about that. Yeah, well, I think it <laughs> might be helpful to put the questions out here. I mean, I, I, I appreciate the expert, I th I'm comfortable with the one year. Like it makes, it, that makes sense to me. Um, I like the idea of if the citizens of Decorah elect new council members who may be interested in revisiting and maybe were voted for because they're interested in revisiting an issue a previous council <coughs> had put down, I, I wouldn't want our procedure in, in this sort of micro way to prevent that type of voice from being heard, if that makes sense. Yeah, and another thing I struggled with, what if new facts come to light? Right. And, uh, and that's why I put, uh, I think it's sub, uh, paragraph D or subparagraph D. Um, I have the one year from the date of action was first voted on, uh, unless there's a two-thirds consent of the council. So. You know, and at first I put unanimous consent to the council, but again, that's that's your call. What's reasonable? Um, on one hand, maybe you think it should be unanimous. Maybe you just need, think it needs to be a supermajority. Uh, so I uh, I think those are good ideas too. Um, I I think it's good to have you don't uh, to prevent. Um, bringing up issues and, uh, that you don't um, that have been duly debated, but at the same time, I don't want to mm -hmm. unduly bind the hands of the council to unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. Just in terms of also asking more thoughtful questions, um, I did um, would like a little oh, sorry guys words tonight. I would ask that we consider the timing. Um, to be slightly less restrictive. So a motion to reconsider must be made at the meeting where the action was first voted upon or at the next regular meeting. Uh, my son had the stomach flu this weekend and I just was thinking how easy it is to miss one day at this table. Um, so something as simple as within the month or within the next two meetings just to... That, and that's paragraph B. That probably yeah. comes right out of Robert's rules, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I just got it out of Robert's rules. But I mean, again, you're, we're not bound by it's that. It's just like right. one day. I think, I think the more time, I will know. Yeah. Yeah, what, whatever you guys feel is appropriate. So E, the um, rule shall not prohibit a similar but substantially different proposed action. Is that something that would always be referred to our legal 
Well, I, I, was I was trying to take me out of it as much as possible, but I think there. I think that puts some, you right in it. Doesn't somebody it? has to make that decision, and I, you know, there's always going to be uh, somewhat of a gray area or a judgment call that has to be made. And according to the rules now, I, that's me on things. With this, I'm trying to put as much of that kind of out there. <laughs> that I, I'm taken out of the decision making and, and taken out of uh, making a judgment call. But you're right, that is one place where I think if there was a question, is it substantive, uh, it, would be, it would be either my call or the, if I'm the city attorney's not here, the city manager. I question uh, three quarters as opposed to two thirds. But three quarters is six of us because you can't have five and a quarter per person. Seventy percent is four. So if we did two thirds, four would be seventy percent of the seven. But that would be just a majority. No, I'm sorry, five. I'm oh, okay. Speaking. Okay. So you'd have to have more support than who voted it down or who. Yeah, that. Uh, and we could spell that out. We could just say, assuming that the number of council members doesn't change any time, uh, time, you need five out of the seven yeah. um, sitting members. Then we don't have to be doing math in our head either. <laughs> oh, that math. <laughs> so it seems like there's some adjustments that you want to make to bring this back with some of those clarifications. Okay. Is that uh, what I'm hearing? It, and I don't know if I have a consensus. Everybody liked what I said? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Go I like it. the timing one for sure. So that's I like the Bergen stomach flu clause. Yeah. <laughs> so for uh, um, reconsidering, it'd be one and 30 days uh, from the date of it was voted on. We would have two council sessions always within 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the percentage uh, five five out of seven mm -hmm. to reconsider unless a year has passed. <clears throat> Leave that. Okay. Do you want to add that language about any city elections or after? Any city election to get to the fact that you might have a new council? I would. Is it worth putting a sentence in there about that? That would, John, under D, then? To do it. After the ex expiration of one year? Yeah. Kirk? Yeah. I don't know, but does 30 days necessarily work? What if we have a national holiday that would kick it back an extra week at the beginning of a month? Wouldn't the two meetings necessarily fall within 30 days? <clears throat> Should we say two regular council meetings? Yeah, I, they'd probably take care of the. I like that. Concern. Yeah, Andy. <laughs> the discussion. And then I'm sorry, as far as that one year, so did we want to do it uh, for, for, the, for the election? So just so I throw out a hypothetical, so if the if something was voted on in November 2019 and it's turned down, go by two council sessions, and we have, there's an election in November 2019. In January 20, 2020, mm -hmm. the very same issue could be brought up just by having one council member put it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two. Or two, two sorry, yeah, two. I, know, I need to look at my own. That what are our procedures? <laughs> Mayor or council, right? Okay. I just throw that out there based on Johanna's comments about yeah. new council, old council type thing. So otherwise, there's really no way to satisfy that if that's a concern. OK, so that is um, part two. Mm -hmm. the rules of the day. And well, was there any need to mm -hmm. vote on the first one, or can we bring them both we'd, back? I think we'd bring back cleaned up language. That sounds good. Final draft. OK. Any other questions on part one? OK. 
So those will be brought back for the next meeting. Yes. Very good. Consider replacement of certain contracted engineering services with the appointment of a city engineer staff position. <clears throat> I make a motion to replace certain contracted engineering services with the appointment of Jeremy Brill as city engineer subject to pre-employment drug screening and physical uh, and physical effective January 29th, 2019. Second. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Who got that second? Andy can have it. I did. Okay. Steve. <laughs> Madam Mayor, may I just ask a question? Um, I need a point of, since we have a motion and a second, <clears throat> is there, can a question come from the floor? It's uh, for the council to to discuss. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, could you come up and sure. say who you are? <clears throat> I'm Julie Fisher from 712 West Main. I just want to know if uh, the city is an equal opportunity employer and if this position was appropriately uh, put out to the public. That's all. I, yes. yes. Yes to both of those comments. Thank you. All right. Roll call. Johnson? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Bell Richard? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Luce? Aye. Very good. Welcome, Jeremy and Brill. We'll look forward to seeing your face at that table <laughs> throughout the time. Or whenever. Every day. <laughs> okay. Consider Ordinance 1231 amending the Code of Ordinance pertaining to City Engineer. Just uh, for review, uh, this ordinance uh, 1231 amends chapters 2.08, chapter 2.10, chapter 2.38, chapter 2.40, and chapter 2.48 of the Municipal Code of the City of Decorah, uh, basically relating to the position of city engineer and city manager and causing the reorg reorganization of those two positions. And street commission. And the street commissioner, which becomes city engineer. I move to approve ordinance one two three one first reading. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Chisel. No, oh, excuse me. Bell Richard. Aye. Chisel. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Luce. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Okay, and there will be two more readings on that ordinance. Yes. Okay, consider approval and certification of 2018 residential tax abatement applications. There are three of them. Would you like to review those please, Chad? Uh, three additional applications came in, uh, Jason and Dana Bachman, 1010 Shagbark, and two for new facilities uh, at Ase Hagen in the Nabatne uh, subdivision. Uh, and so we submit those. They've either just been recently completed at the end of December or first part of January. So uh, we submit them to council for certification and submission to the county assessor. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Chisel? Aye. Bell Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. May I have a point of order? I'm curious about ordinance 1231. Can we go ahead and hire someone to do a job that isn't within our code? You've appointed a city engineer. So we can have someone run that's not under our ordinances? So there is a city engineer <coughs> position under the ordinances and we're following the procedure that's in the existing ordinance for the appointment of a city engineer. Okay. What uh, The proposed ordinance that uh, the first reading just passed, it, that will change the process 
for the future. That's one part of it. And then it's also kind of a reorganization of some of the duties and responsibilities of the city engineer. So there's uh, pretty much we looked at every provision in the code about either the engineer's duties and respons primary duties and responsibilities and how they're appointed and managed essentially. So I'm just curious if it would make sense to waive and adopt since it's something that we're all in favor of doing by the vote. Yeah, why I come back for two more meetings and do the same type of vote? But I'm probably out of order because we already moved on the agenda. Well, I, you know. Well, so you can get to the second. I'm always learning. <laughs> reading on January 22nd and then wait there and adopt at that time and it haven't changed anything. Thank you. Okay. All right. Consider board commissions and appointments. This is uh, not an easy task at times. I'll, I'll, I'll put it out that way. Don't, uh, I don't claim to know exactly how things are proceeded, but I will give you how I came to the conclusion that I did. And also, uh, in also knowing that I have a full city council that works along uh, with the appointment decisions. Uh, in December, I did have put out a news release encourage participation in boards and committees. I did emphasize and hope that there would be females that would come forth for gender equity um, because I, I obviously I feel that that's important. At that time, Brian Petersburg name was up for the airport commission, but because I was sending out the information, I said we would appoint Brian Petersburg uh, later. So you will see his name on the appointment. Um, the Board of Adjustment, uh, Steve Johnson re uh, retired. I did have an individual uh, in Craig Tweet who wanted to become involved and has been involved in some of the city activities, uh, also through the State Extension Service. Uh, for the Board of Adjustment. You will find his application in the box. Um, the tree board, um, there were reappointments uh, for Mark Faldet, Peter Vandalinden, and Dick Gilgo, and then a new application for Drew Pellet. Um, I have not received any female applications for any of the uh, boards of commission. The planning and zoning was the one that was. Can I, can I ask yeah. a question? Sure. I see Jeremy's on mm. the Decor Tree Committee. Is he yes. allowed to be on that as an employee? That I would, uh, we would have to clarify that. We've had staff um, members on various boards and commissions, uh, but I have talked to Jeremy about changing his role on that committee. Uh, they meet uh, in a couple of weeks. 31st. 31st, yeah. Okay. Uh, planning and zoning, uh, Brian Cook and Joel Zook were up for reappointment. Brian verbally stated that he would be willing to serve. Uh, Joel initially, uh, I wouldn't say initially, said it, you know, whatever would work, but Joel also put in an application. And so, in addition, from the ad, I got two additional applicants and uh, Brad Wicks and Ryan Delaney. Uh, when I considered the appointments, uh, I, I considered a couple things. One, I know that Brian has been on the uh, planning and zoning for a number of years and a number of reappointments. I do not know if the reappointment, if it was an automatic reappointment or if there were no people that asked to be on it. I do not know that piece. Uh, Joel Zook came on in December, I believe, of 2017 uh, to fill out Jared Walters uh, uh, because he was going to be running for, for office. The new applications that I got with Brad Wicks and Ryan Delaney uh, showed experience uh, 
in the field and also represented business entities, which I know that that's hard. There are times that there are people on, business, on commissions and boards that are business related, and there are times that there aren't. Um, when I considered both of those two, I felt that there should be more representation from businesses uh, on the Planning and Zoning Commission and in looking at uh, who was currently on, I did look as far as that was concerned. Uh, but I felt that there were actually four applicants that could be considered for the two positions on the planning and zoning. Uh, I know that historically there have been uh, people who have said I, I'd be glad to stay on and they continue to roll over and there are some times when they say when does somebody new come on. As far as Joel is concerned, that was a, a difficult uh, decision because obviously I feel he's very qualified. I think he's done a very good job. Um, the reason I brought the two business people in is because I felt that they could help uh, balance out planning and zoning somewhat. I am aware that there are a lot of feelings amongst the city council um, about these two recommendations, and so I'm bringing it back to the city council. I believe the first thing you have to do is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they have to approve or not approve the two recommendations. Is that correct? Or can they discuss what they feel should be? Could you give me some guidance on this? On uh, the appointment? So yes. uh, it's the mayor's authority to appoint subject to the consent of the council, which basically means the majority of the council and the mayor have to agree on who's going to be appointed regardless of who brings forth the nomination. Okay. Um, and if you can't agree, uh, mm -hmm. that position goes vacant. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's no automatic extension um, that goes on. Uh, and it talks about that in the code, like planning and zoning talks about that. I'd have to double check the other ones, but like planning and zoning specifically talks about the terms uh, of um, commission members and how they're, the process for appointing them. And then if a position should go vacant during a term, uh, the, uh, the appointment of somebody new uh, for the balance of the term of the person who left. And then new term starts over and it goes back to uh, the same process of appointment by mayor subject to the approval of uh, the city council. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what I thought it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Is that I can suggest, I felt that I could suggest who I would recommend to go on, mm -hmm. knowing that there, there were four and knowing that there would be some discussion amongst the city council. Now my question is, is if you don't agree on something and you say then can that go does that go on to the next meeting and it could be brought up at that next meeting then or I, uh, I just, I've, I've had a hard time with the process of how that works. It, the code doesn't say that but I'll just say about the agenda. Uh, our agenda has um, certain people that are being nominated for appointment and has a specific name. Uh, I think it's better if that's not the person yeah. who is going to be appointed, yes. that it be put onto the next agenda. You could talk about those people, but I don't, uh, to be fair as far as notice goes, if you've provided notice, you're considering this person for appointment, but then switch it out with somebody completely different. I. Um, I think it's more appropriate to post that notice for another meeting. I see. So actually, theoretically, we should just have that there would be two vacancies and then the discussion. I th it, arguably, that would probably, you wouldn't run into the same problem. Okay. I, I guess there might be a question, is that uh, appropriate notice of who the council is considering to appoint? But. You know, the law is a little vague about, you got to provide no, reasonable notice to the public about what's going to be discussed and acted upon. Uh, whether or not the actual named in, nominee 
is is relevant. I think that's debatable. But once you've named that person, okay. I I don't think it would be appropriate to slip somebody else or have somebody else Correct. come in there. So actually, I probably still need more help. Theoretically, what they need to do is vote on my recommendation for the two people that I'm bringing forth for the planning and vote. Yeah, I, I would say that would be the, uh, or you can table it. I mean, you don't have to vote on it. I'd make a motion to table. I wasn't aware that Brian and Joel still were still interested. I thought these were just the only two applicants that we had. Well, that's why. Which is a good problem to have, because normally we have them really <laughs> Well, <laughs> exactly. So this is the first time I think we've ever had <laughs> more people than there are spots. Well, exactly. So and then, thank you for applying. I appreciate that. Brian. You know, and exactly. And then having, OK, now. Now we actually have to make a decision. Thought, yeah, I think, well, what I do is I know there's four. Right. These are who I think are recommending. OK, what does the council think? That's, right. that's how I was viewing. Well, I didn't see the other two applications in the drop box, so I figured that there was only two. Well, two, one, uh, I think Brian, well, Brian had stated to you that he would be willing to get me. And, and Joel did as well. And so Joel did. So past practice has been that if the incumbents are willing to serve, verbal or otherwise, that the council considers that. We typically don't ask them to fill out a new application and get right. back in and all that kind of stuff. Okay. If they've verbally said, I'm willing to serve for another term. Sign me up. Let's go. Past practice, that's been good enough. Right. So John, actually, what's the status of previous meetings where Joel's name was listed last year, but we were asked not to move on it in terms of advertising? Is that then because it was tabled, then that name just disappears? No, I as mean, a previously recommended for reappointment, uh, recommended by the by the mayor. It, she did. I don't, think, I don't think I recommended. I think it was listed, but they were both listed on the on a previous that agenda. That was listed. Yeah, and you'd ask the council to not vote on them. Pending okay, all right, that's correct. Advertisement for possible gender equity applications. That's correct. So when we were asked to table it, in effect, did those names just disappear? And the fact that they're not listed on this agenda, then that history is sort of erased, and we don't remember that. Well, I don't that's think it's not, that's not how the way I would probably frame it. I think it's got to be brought back uh, and put on the, to the uh, on the agenda. So uh, um, that's not what's on the the agenda tonight. So I, uh, I suppose somebody could bring it back up in the future. But I guess the mayor isn't also stuck with. Um, if she nominates somebody one day, could she withdraw, uh, you know, withdraw that nomination or replace it with somebody else? She could. I think there's got to be. A, I look at it as a, as a contract. There's got to be a meeting of the minds. <laughs> it is it, uh, is the mayor at this point in time nominating candidate A, and is the council approving candidate A at this point in time, at the exact same time? And I move the table. Okay, so we, had, so we have a yeah, move to table. Everything. All of them or just P and Z? Um, I would prefer to re, uh, to look at each, each uh, one individually and work with P and Z right now. And then I would on. make a motion to table the P and Z appointments. Okay. Well, we have a motion. Second. Thank you. Discussion. I, I would share just when I received the agenda, um, and this is overarching of all of the committees, Lorraine, mm -hmm. uh, I was concerned that we had had several of these names on multiple agendas and I've been asked to table um, for the purpose of recruiting female applicants and to have all nominations coming back um, with male applicants was disappointing to our process and also to engagement in our community. Sure. And so I think it's important for us to keep talking about it 
and also um, thinking not about these particular appointments in front of us, but our appointments over the future year to do more recruitment and move to those stages as we've talked about yeah, beyond right. advertising only. Right, and that's why we went with the advertisements. Uh, However, the advertisements were suggested after we'd already had names on the, the agenda. Right. So I think we need to not do that again. It could, maybe I could be fired. <laughs> That's the people's responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm to it. fire. This is confusing business. <laughs> okay, there, are several, so. there are several steps that we traditionally do. Um, as uh, appointments um, or terms come up, we're constantly talking about those at those committee meetings, and that's an open okay. public forum. Yeah. So we have those conversations, especially from the standpoint where the staff liaison to any particular board or commission will say, as a reminder, your term is coming due, what are your intentions? And that may happen in at least two meetings prior to the end of that time. Um, I know the mayor here, or we have conversations here at different times. You know, part of the challenge in this is that your boards and commissions come, terms come due at so many different times throughout the year. None of them are, you know, they're not all, you know, at the end of the calendar year, at the end of the fiscal year, or anything like that. You have some in May, you have some in June, you have some in December, you know, they're all over the board. Um, consequently, too, though, we, we do send out a press release. You know, I understand that. Again, randomly, once or twice a year, and say, hey, we need usually happens when we have a significant board that maybe can't find somebody, we start sending out more feelers for more responses. So, open to suggestions to advertise and promote at any time, certainly. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to table, and we've been discussing. Is there any further discussion on this particular piece? Roll call. Hadley? Aye. Bill Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Chisel? No. Bergen? Aye. Okay. I would move the other appointments that weren't tabled to be accepted. No, wait. Let's, yeah, let's, so I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just want to clarify that that board of adjustment appointment, yes, I believe that's a council appointment. That's not a mayor appointment with the Oh, that's good to know. So, do you want to move them separately? I yeah. separate motion for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, the motion. And that's a good point. I, I mean, this is my own administrative protocol here, but I have each of these listed out for separate right. motions tonight. Okay. Just because right. I anticipated some conversation. So, and I but, think to Wanda's point, there are some differences between council appointment and mayor. Correct. Appointment council approval, so okay. I would recommend you just go through each of them indi right. individually. Right. The, the piece that we just tabled was just for planning. Just and for zoning. planning and zoning. Correct. Okay. I so motion. I motion to approve top. Craig Tweed as the council appointment for the board of adjustments. Second. Any discussion? I think Craig will be an asset for the community. Okay. Roll call. Bill Richard. Aye. Luce. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Chisel. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Motion passed. I move to appoint Brian Petersburg as the airport commission mayor appointee with council approval. Discussion? Oh, second. Yes, Do we have a second? I will. Steve? Now, discussion? I would like a ride in an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you two can go out there when they have that. I did. I, did. I had a great yeah. time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, roll call. Bill Richard? Aye. Luce? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Okay. Let's do the tree board. I move to approve Drew, Mark, Peter, and Dick to the tree board. Second. Discussion? Roll call. 
Bill Richard? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Just to note, there's still one vacancy on the tree board. Yep. All right. So I need, uh, as far as the planning and zoning, we have four applicants. Is it that they would, we would bring those back to the next meeting, having each application uh, posted on Dropbox? Well, two of them are already in Dropbox, yep. and two of them are incumbent, and we don't make them reapply okay. for protocol, right. so. So it's just the two of them. So bring forth the four at the next okay. meeting, yeah. Well, the, the oh, mayor still no. needs to make her recommendation for appointment. Well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want a discussion among city council. I mean, I will bring, I took. I can just, I mean, we should do that discussion now then. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. I think the question is, do you Man, want to break table. protocol from this point on? Really, as isn't far that what as it comes down the to? protocol, as far as of appointing incumbents, or not, I mean, just if they're real, still interested real in serving. Okay, that's really all it comes no, down to. No, I don't think so. Really? There isn't anything that states that it's automatic that the incumbent is put back in. Is that correct? Yeah, I. I I, it's I not a written it. policy, it's just no. been past practice. That, okay. And part of so because what that. Andy's saying, or what you know, Andy said before, is that you usually aren't swimming in applications. And right. so if you've got folks that want to continue to serve, the council has traditionally honored that. Okay. But there isn't anything that says you have to. Okay. I think the other thing to consider, not that, not that like the tree board or the airport commission don't have learning curves, but planning and zoning does have a, mm. a more steep learning curve, and especially because we've been encouraging people to incur, to go for formal training, whether it's through ISU extension, whether it's through the comp plan review, whether it's through um, going over the overlay maps and things like that. It's not, um, it's much more of a working board or a work, working commission than a lot of our other commissions. Okay. Um, so if we do have incumbent people, I appreciate that. But maybe discussion of term limits, because I know Brian's been on since before I, when I was on PNZ, so he's been on for at least a decade. Um, yeah, I think it's a balance of you know, having yeah. incumbents, but also if you want new blood okay. and encouraging okay. people. Right. I, I think the issue I had with the appoint, appointments as they were on the agenda was more so with Joel because he did never completed a full a full five year term. He was appointed midterm, so he would be you know we'd be ending his before you know even two years on the commission or mm -hmm. so that that is the one that although he was appointed to fill a t complete a term right. right so he's done that yeah. so i think john's point earlier about it's a new case when the term expires i hear what you're saying i, I don't hear what you're saying but <laughs> um <laughs> that he, he did complete a term well, but not a full term but if, I, what i'm saying is well, what, he what did I, what he was asked to do a uh, finish a term correct. that's what i'm saying and okay. so okay and to ross's point of having some continuity based on the the learning curve i'm considering a five-year term as the minimum that i would want someone you know, they could certainly, if they don't want to proceed after after two years, that's fine. But if they're interested and we've liked what they've done, then I would certainly rather see them be appointed again than a new person come in at that time. Especially because we're in the middle of a comp plan review. I mean, right. it's not like they're not undertaking anything. They've already been, what, Chad, a year and a half into this? Yeah. Does the comp review in, uh, include other members that are looking at beyond just planning and zoning? Or is it, it has in the past, but I don't know currently okay. what they're rewriting. Randy, any comments? Well, I like the appointments of Ryan and Brad because of their professions. They're used to working with planning and zoning because that's what they do when they get into other communities. Um, might bring a different perspective to our current board. We currently have plenty of people with experience that can get them up to speed with what we have, but it brings fresh eyes and How about new to perspective. Be, oh, sorry, Randy. How about to be fair, we take one, keep one incumbent, and, and get one new person? I would, 
I would think that's definitely in your consideration. Since we have four applicants, who we'll also qualified. Well, and Brian's a contractor, you know, and so we've had a contractor, a concrete contractor on there for years and years and years and years. Um, let's see. Well, I know you are all really curious, but Joel did not ask me before he <laughs> reapplied for this planning and zoning commission. <laughs> How about you? Any comments? I have, I have no comment. Okay, that's that's fine. All right, I will bring. So even though I'm not really fond of doing this, this has been it's it's hard. It's one of the benefits of you. What you get paid for, Lorraine? Oh, <laughs> Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> I like the but it's like, oh my gosh. I'm not sure how I signed up. Because you know, I really oh, want to tell you how much I appreciate uh, being able to converse with the city council people. about the whole thing. Can it's not easy. Uh, so what my goal is for the next well, meeting is to be able to bring forth two recommendations okay. for city approval. In the meantime, uh, you have planning and zoning. Meeting for Monday. Next Monday night. TNZ. There'll be two. There'll be two seats yeah. short. That would come. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So they'll have a five-member. And please put that on the agenda for the next okay. meeting. Yeah, we will put. Speaking to the term limit idea, it seems like we could look at in terms of if we want to make sure new blood that we establish some type of three terms for this commission or so those would be ordinances yeah. those would be amendments to yeah, right. particular commission uh, codes if you wanted to do something like that um, could take a fair amount of work to kind of work through that and determine what's an appropriate amount of time some of the boards and commissions have different lengths of service five right. years six years you know whatever so you know, does that balance in where somebody on one commission could ser serve two terms and be 12 years, and somebody two terms on another could only be six years? Chad, could you look at the, <coughs> the League of Municipal Cities to see what other communities do for best practices on that? I think it might be beneficial for the council to know what other cities are doing as far as term limits. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know I've done this as a jab before, but there is still a cable commission. Yes. Right. And, you know, it might be good just to clean up some of our commissions sure. and some things like that in the in the same, if we look at term limits, if we could also look at our standing commissions and committees um, for cleanup, it might be just a good review for 2019. Not to create more work for myself, but John and I also talked about trying to consolidate term ending times oh. to eat, try to get either you know half of them in December and half of them in June or get them all in December that's a bigger monumental task but maybe that helps some too if, I don't know anyway if you're going to start touching each one of these commissions you might as well tackle yeah, it all at that time welcome. instead of having to revisit it later and have a completely separate ordinance it'd be a bear of an ordinance but <laughs> it's probably better to go through it one time and get that right. all okay or try to that sounds good Thank you very much. Can we have the tree committee serve the life of the tree? <laughs> the life of the trees that they plant? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, moving right along here. Let's see. City manager report. Um, you've heard from me enough. I have nothing to report. Yes, Thanks. you do. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, you had your one minute video on. Oh, Facebook. yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, that's more the department heads. Um, we started something new this year. I started something new, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, posting a one-minute video each week throughout the year. Um, One-minute snippet from a department, from a park, from a facility, from a staff perspective on anything of interest. And at the end of the year, we'll have 52 minutes of what's unique about the chorus. So the wastewater treatment plant was our first one this last week. So wasn't yeah. that exciting to see those hairballs? <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was Yuck. riveting. So um, <laughs> that's all I have. <laughs> so, <laughs> moving right along, how about uh, Bill Nixon? <laughs> yeah, that's it. He's right there. I see him. <laughs> Any comments from your end? Okay. Well, I didn't know who was going next. So. Looks like me. Yeah, I guess it looks like you. Okay, 
Uh, all right, just want to report uh, very quickly that um, I just recently completed the OSHA 300 report, which is the work comp report I have to do each year. And we had one recordable injury this year. Nice. And I think you heard me talk about a few weeks ago about our safety committee and, and the work that our employees do. That really pinpoints the work that our employees do and highlights that because they really take safety seriously. So, and then our budget workshop, I'm hoping that maybe February 4th we can do that if that works for the council. Four we'll start like at four o'clock. Four o'clock. And then we'll break for a short council meeting during that time and, <coughs> and then work on the budget then if that's acceptable to everybody. Okay. I was just going to give a quick update. Um, as you know, we were, Decor was selected as a great Iowa Great Place a while back, and uh, we did get the uh, funding to do the rock work through a lot of the parks. Uh, a lot of that is approaching 100 years old, and this will be a great opportunity to do some rehab and. Um, fixing those spots up, so it's, it'll be, uh, it's about $155,000 coming in, so. Good job. Don't be alarmed when you see me coming up with papers, I promise to keep it really short. Um, first of all, thank you for considering the library capital improvement projects and the bonding process. Um, we're looking forward to getting things fixed up at the library building. Um, two other things, we have a really great partnership coming up with both the Decorah Police Department and with the Winnishik County Sheriff's Department. We're going to be offering two public safety programs in <laughs> January. Uh, the first will be Tuesday, January 15th at 6.30. The presentation will be Staying Safe with Sheriff Dan Marks. It's going to talk a little bit about situational awareness being aware of your surroundings, how to minimize personal risk. Obviously, these are things that we prefer not to think a lot about in our relatively safe community, but um, happenings in Iowa and across the nation in the past year or so have indicated that maybe it's a good thing to keep an eye on. So we're looking forward to having Sheriff Marks uh, there on Tuesday, January 15th. Um, and Decor Police Officer and Drug Task Force member Scott Jennings will be coming on Tuesday the 29th at 6.30 to talk a little bit about emerging drug trends in Northeast Iowa. Another topic that we might prefer to think isn't affecting our communities, but statistics are showing us otherwise. So. That'll be a good opportunity for caregivers, parents, educators to learn a little bit about identifying signs of drug use, identifying substances, and learning a little bit about what's being done to mitigate those risks in our communities. Uh, more information is available on our website. Both of those are free and open to the public. Secondarily, also very briefly, um, myself, Andy, Chopper, and a number of other local professionals are doing the Leadership Decora program through the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we're doing a volunteer project coming up in the next couple months. We're asking local nonprofits, educational groups, civic organizations to apply if they would like a pool of volunteer labor. Um, details about that can be found on the Chamber website or the library website. Thank you. Jeremy, did you have anything to report from there? <laughs> because I haven't started yet, I do not. That's okay. <laughs> Maybe a couple weeks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Randy. Okay, well, like Wanda said, uh, February 4th, we'd like to schedule the budget workshop starting at 4 and then take our break. Um, also, on January 22nd, prior to our next meeting at 5 o'clock, I'd like to get the finance group together to go over the audit from Hacker and Nelson so we have that fresh prior to the budget. And that's all I have this evening. Uh, hotel, hotel. Still there. We're, yeah, we're still there. Because uh, we did have a meeting. We did have a meeting, meeting yep. Right? We did have a meeting last week. Um, got some good ideas. We're still, that group is still trying to, the chamber, economic development, um, we're still trying to come up with some kind of marketing plan. We're possibly looking at outsourcing to bring somebody in that can give us a little bit, give 
economic development and chamber a little bit more guidance as to which way to go or how to do this because um, we're relying real heavily on Kirk help me Amy from Luther Amy Vineyard Wiedemann from Luther's Luther from their marketing department she's given us some great guidance but as a committee we really don't have the expertise to pull this off so um, Things are moving in the right direction. We're okay. just. Did you set another meeting? Uh, we got a <coughs> doodle, doodle thing out right now. Okay. To sometime in February, we're going to try and meet up again. Okay, and then, and then decide what. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Everything's posted. Yeah, and we had uh, the books look good. The the yes. uh, revenues are very strong. Okay. Uh, yes. This year. So that's why if we have to hire a consultant to kind of get everybody up to speed or. Look forward to continuing to hear. Yes. Randy, just quickly, we get five o'clock on the twenty second for our budget. Is that what you're Correct. thinking? Yep, for the audit review. Yep. Yes. Yep. Dan. Nothing further for me. Nothing this time. Happy New Year. I was gonna ditto. Um, when Steve said we went to this meeting because the meeting title was so long, now I have to look it up. Um, <laughs> Is that the he didn't thing? report going to it. Um, I attended with Chad and Stephen Lorraine the mm -hmm. county hazardous mitigation kickoff meeting, um, which was uh, a good first 90 minute meeting of what sounds like is going to be a long process. Um, but I was particularly uh, pleased that the emphasis both from Michelle as a facilitator and Sean on making sure that this uh, five-year countywide plan m meshes well with all of the other plans we're required to make mm -hmm. um, and also helping already from the beginning helping narrow goals to being achievable. There's a requirement for being able to receive FEMA, FEMA funding. funding. Yes. Presidential we'll, disaster. Right. We will all do the plan. Okay. Nothing there. Nothing, Mayor. I'm thinking about you and your family. Thank you. And you're back. I'm back. Good for you. I just started J term today. Good. Nice to have you back. I attended the emergency management meeting, which is the county management meeting, the hazardous mitigation meeting. Um, they're starting to talk about the 911 meetings. It's just interesting as a mayor, the county involvement. We have been looking at the flag. Uh, policy and still are working more on that. Uh, I'd like to request a utility meeting uh, to be just the starting discussion as far as how we're going to work with the franchise piece. It, it, you, you've got a meeting set up? Okay. Can you fill me in on that? Why am I not? How are because we we're waiting for them to hear back from the IUB. Very good. Thank you very much. That's where you're up with it. Thank you. I appreciate that. I just want to make sure that, because I know. Something, we'll, okay. We'll have a meeting about it. Yeah, that's okay. I just know that there's dollars involved with seeing one way or the other. So, uh, oh, uh, Deb Cook's last day is January 15th. Uh, and yet, what what time is that gathering? Well, throughout the day. Stop in. Okay. That's her last day, so we'll, you know, staff will probably have lunch or something, maybe some cake. They come on by anytime from lunch. That'd be too okay. Good. I'd like an emotion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you very much.